Hello there everyone and welcome to this reflection coming from Kalen Parish Manse. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me read some words from John's Gospel. And it's just the first few verses. One to five. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of humanity. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. Amen. John's Gospel really is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the Gospels. All four are different and they, they're all marvellous in their own right. But John really is the one that's the most thoughtful. It's the one that's the most theological. It's, it's the deepest in its sense of reflection on who Jesus was and what was done by God in him and through him. And these first verses are like part of, of an introduction. Can you imagine um, driving up to some stately home, like one of these owned by the National Trust, and you go through a marvellous big gate and then there's a long driveway till you get to this incredible house. If you imagine the house as John's Gospel, an amazing Gospel with so many rooms in it, inverted commas, for us to study and to rest and to think about the message of Jesus. And the driveway up is the introduction in that first chapter of John. And these verses I've just read, in a sense, are the gateway, the gateway that sets the scene, even for the drive up to this amazing place. Let me just read these words again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Now the, the Greek there is logos, and think of the word logic. So in the Greek it can mean a word in the sense of a communication that explains something. And it can also mean rationality, the rationality or the intelligibility of the world. So it can be used here in both senses, that Jesus is the expression, the explanation of the logos, of the rationality of God, the logic of God. And in many English words, we see logos as part of it. Think of Anthropology, that logi is, refers to logic, or archaeology, or biology. When you have logi, that relates to the Greek logos. It's the science of, the rationale of, the information that stands behind whatever topic it is you're dealing with. So this is, this is heavy stuff. Jesus is the logos of God. He's the expression of God, explaining who God is. He's the rationale behind even the created order. And just in, as in Genesis 1, we have in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Here we have God as the creator, but it's the word, it's the logos of God who's involved in that creation. And that logos is also the same Jesus, who is incarnate later on in this chapter in verse 14, the Word became flesh, or the Word became human and lived among us. And as the climax in Genesis 1 is human beings made in the image of God, the climax in John's introduction here is of the Word who stands behind all things and is the creator of all things, becoming a human being 
and living in our midst as an expression of who and what God is. So this is heady stuff. And I'll refer to this in weeks to come. I think I'll, I'll, I'll come back to some of this because there's so much there to unpack. But really, the verse for today is found in verse 5. Or 4 and 5. In him was life, and that life was the light of humanity. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Now, you will know that uh, one of the, the, the uh, responses that we use in some of these uh, reflections is the light of the world has come, Jesus is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. Well, the interesting thing here is that the Greek word that's used can be interpreted three ways. Firstly, it can mean that the darkness uh, will not overcome the light in the sense of pursuing it to, to, to grab hold of it. Or it can mean uh, the darkness actually extinguishes the light, like putting a candle out. And thirdly, it can also mean that the darkness has not understood the light. And here in the, the new international version that I've just read, it's interpreted as the third one, that the darkness has not understood it. Now, many scholars think that this is maybe too soft an interpretation, that, that John means either uh, version one or version two, that the darkness uh, has not overcome it, it's pursuing it but has, has not overcome the light, uh, or the darkness will never extinguish the light, rather than has not understood it. But I like to think that John has all three meanings in mind at the same time, because many scholars have noted that he, he loves to use words that have double meanings, and the context can actually explicate it both ways. Uh, and that's deliberate, I think. So if we think of this uh, as a situation where we don't have to choose, um, we normally think of it as not overcoming and not extinguishing the light. And that's a brilliant truth, that the gospel light is eternal because God is eternal. And whatever the ravages of time, whatever the difficulties the church faces, the message of the gospel will be a light, it will be a candle that will continue to burn because the darkness can't extinguish it, it will never overcome it. But there's that subtle third way of looking at the light. The darkness has misunderstood it, doesn't get it. Is that not true of the world in which we live? We're going through troubled times and I want us to remember that part of the problem is in our culture we've forgotten who we are. We've been cast adrift from our Christian roots and so many things that we in our country but also in Europe, Western Europe, have taken for granted for centuries is no longer there. We've become rootless as a culture and, and as a Western civilization. We've forgotten where our roots are, what has made us or helped to, to shape and mould us uh, to be who we are. And as a result, we're rudderless. We're not quite sure where to go. There's problems here, there's problems there. Which direction do we steer in? It's incumbent upon us in the church to remind ourselves of who we are. I heard that someone in the Church of Scotland said that although the church will be uh, contracting greatly in the years ahead, both in numbers and certainly numbers of clergy and the number of churches, we will still be able to speak truth to power. And I'm thinking, this is not the time for grandiose statements. In some ways in the church, we can't even speak truth to ourselves. So let's be a wee bit more humble. The truth to ourselves today is this. Have we forgotten who we are and how we came into being as a church because that impacts on the society in which we live in. We talk about Remembrance Sunday and that's so 
important in our nation. It's part of our heritage. But you know, every time we share the sacrament of communion, it's done in remembrance of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. But then every day for the Christian should be an act of remembrance. As I was looking at some of my books here on John's Gospel, I was getting excited, <laughs> excited again. And it's not because I was learning anything new, it's because what I was reading was jogging my memory of all the stuff I've got in there that's not necessar necessarily to the forefront of my consciousness. So when I read something, oh, of course, wow, the light bulb comes on again and you remember. And I, I got excited again about the power of this passage. But I didn't learn anything new. I knew that, but I had forgotten I, I knew some of these things. Is that not true for our Christian knowledge and the journey that we're on? Take some sometimes when we're maybe struggling with issues of faith and doubt. And it can be a reminder of an experience or of a verse or of something in our past that makes us feel good. It gives us encouragement. It spurs us up and onward. And we just needed to remember who we are. And what God has done in each and every one of our lives as he's led us and guided us through all the twists and turns of each of our respective journeys as people, as uh, souls in the making. God's hands and God's grace has been upon us on that journey. And sometimes we forget who we are. We forget what the light is until we allow it to shine again. We live in a culture that doesn't understand the power of this gospel. And that's so sad. But what is even sadder is if we, the light bearers called by God to understand this light and to share it, to reflect it, if we don't even get it, and I'm including myself in that too. It's so easy to forget what we know. And that's why the Christian faith is a journey of discipline. Now, the word disciple comes from the same root as discipline. A disciple in following Jesus needs disciplined focus and disciplined habits. So let's carry on in the journey Whatever we've been facing and whatever we're going through, let's dust ourselves down and begin again. Every day is a new start to remind ourselves of who we are in Jesus Christ. That the world outside might not understand this gospel. It may not understand the light, but we do. So let's remember our roots and let's stop being rudderless. Let's find God's direction for our, each and every one of our lives. And then and only then can the church truly be what it was called to be. Let us pray. Lord, you know who each and every one of us is. You know how our lives have panned out. You know everything about us, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, the things that are triumphs and the things that are tragedies in our lives. And yet you have called us. You know us by name. And you love us. And that is revealed in and through Jesus Christ. Your word to the world. Your light in the dark place. So Lord, may we live our lives that the darkness never has the final word. In fact, it has no word at all, for we are children of the light. Lead our steps, guide our paths, help us, deliver us indeed from distraction and, and also from confusion. Lead us on the straight path, enlighten our minds, inspire our spirits and guide us on the everlasting journey that we may too, in small ways, all reflect something of the light of Jesus. Amen. 
once again thank you for watching and listening there will be a, a link for a song afterwards and could I remind you today that uh, there will be no reflection next Sunday uh, because I'm, I'm not here uh, next weekend so there'll be no reflection uh, next week but the reflections will begin again the week after thank you for watching God be with you this coming week Amen